Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and today we are going to look at 10 photography websites that you should copy. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, so perhaps you are just starting your photography business and you're trying to figure out what I should put on my website, or maybe you have already had a photography business for a while and you're looking to do a website redesign. Well, today's video is exactly right for you because we're gonna look at some great examples of what to do and also what not to do. I'm gonna go through each website here and we're gonna talk about the things that I love, the things that are great and that you should apply to your website, both for SEO and for user experience. And then we're gonna go through and talk about the things that are not so great, the things that I would tweak, uh, whether that's to show up better on Google search or whether I think that would just create a better and experience for your clients. So the two essential main factors to a great website design are SEO, and user experience. SEO is search engine optimization. That's everything you do on your website that helps Google find you and helps Google know what your website is about, what kind of services you offer, and whether or not they should show you in the search results. And showing up in Google search is something we probably all want to do, so it's very important. The second piece of website design is user experience, and it's essentially what it sounds like. When a visitor actually finds your site and goes onto your site, can they find everything they want to? Do they enjoy the process of looking through your photos, or is it a nightmare trying to find your information, trying to navigate, trying to contact you, etc.? So we want to balance both of these as well as we can across our site, and sometimes doing things for SEO makes it a little bit worse for user experience. And and vice versa. Sometimes making something very beautiful and minimal in our website design winds up kind of hurting us in the SEO department. So we're going to look at some examples and show you how we can do this well and this well. So let's hop over into website number one which is SilasChow.com. Now there's a few things I love about Silas's site and a few things that I probably would do differently. So what would I absolutely copy if I were you? I would copy what he has right here at the top, which is his location. You can find it easily. He's a wedding photographer based in Melbourne, Australia. And why does this matter? It's not so much for user experience, it's for Google. So Google looks at this and says, oh, Silas's site is all about wedding photography and he's based in Melbourne, Australia. Therefore, when someone searches Melbourne wedding photographer, Google knows, okay, he is one of the people we can search, um, include in our search results. What I don't love about Silas's site is it's pretty darn busy. When you open it up, it's not exactly uh, user-focused. What, what are these? Are these images? Are they blog posts? I don't really know. We've got so many options to choose from. Ideally, in user experience, you want the path for your visitor to be pretty clear. Go here, go here, go here, go here. Not 15,000 different options to choose from. Um, another thing that I do love, however, is he has testimonials right up here and the ability to check availability right on his site. As we scroll down, it's a pretty simple page. We've got all of his different posts, and then we have a contact uh, info bar right here. Personally, I'm like, why would you choose this particular image? I would have gone with you know, something a little bit more impressive for his contact image or just gotten rid of the image altogether. And then we see again that we have his contact information right at the very bottom, as well as his Australian business number. I'm not sure why this is there. Maybe that's necessary in Australia, but um, definitely not doing anything for his SEO. I would, however, if I were him, add my business address down here at the bottom of my website. That's very important if you want to rank for a location. It helps you a lot. The other feature that I really like about Silas's site that I think you should consider including is his Let's Chat bar. So this is really, really cool. If I'm a bride and I don't feel like going through and contacting a million different photographers, it is definitely an advantage to be able to just type in and say, hey, can you send me rates? or ask a question. This is definitely a great feature. Uh, the one thing that I would change is I would have the actual branding and color line up with the colors of his site because it's kind of conflicting. Okay, so that is Silas Chow's website. Let's move on to our next example. J Core Photography. Right at the very top, this is my favorite part about this site, accepting seven more couples and two more students. So right away, we've created something called Urgency. When a bride is actually on this website, the first thing they see is, oh my gosh, I have to act fast or I might not be able to book J-Core Photography. It shows he's in demand and therefore a bride is much more likely to um, contact him sooner, essentially. So it's a very simple site. On the homepage we just have scrolling images here and then up here we have weddings, bride reviews, destinations, about and a write me section. So uh, let's take a quick look at a few things that I love. Bride reviews. If you don't have reviews on your website, you are missing out in a huge way. Having this is just a form of social proof. It basically allows brides to see that other people have been happy with your services and creates trust. Uh, another thing that I really love is with we go to about J-Core Photography. 
let's look at his about page. And what is so cool about this is it's not really about him. When you read it, what if you had wedding photos you regret? That is his main call to action. What if you actually booked the wrong wedding photographer? And then he shares about how when he got married, um, they got their photos and they were disappointed. And wow, what a disappointment that was. What if you made the same mistake is the essential message that J. Core Photography is sending. And so brides are much more likely to say, oh, okay, maybe it's worth investing in my photographer and being a little more careful in my approach to who I choose rather than just going by budget. Another thing that's great is he's included his publications right here at the very bottom. And again, he has his location information at the bottom here. And I believe it's on his homepage as well. If you can, put your location address in the bottom of every single page of your site. So that's really great. And there's one more thing that I wanted to show you that I thought was really cool. He's got an estimated wedding budget in his contact form, which kind of helps him engaging his pricing as well as who is financing the wedding, I'm assuming that he probably can then cater his exact messages to brides depending on who's paying for it. If he knows that mom and dad are paying for it, well, then he might need to think about his messaging and what he says to cater to mom and dad a little bit more. And this is a really great question to ask your couples. How important is photography to you in your wedding day? Okay, so that's really, really great. Now, there are a couple of things that I personally would change about Jordan's website. Here's, here's what I would change. The first is on this particular Write Me page. I don't think this image lends a lot to his page. Uh, the second is overall the website design I think is a little bit, um, I'm not wowed by it. It's a little bit too basic. I don't really like his fonts. Um, that said, he's booking himself out solid. If it were me and I were trying to rank this website, there's a couple big changes I would make. The first is if you look up here in Google Chrome, you can see this little info not secure. And that's because he hasn't registered his website with HTTPS. It doesn't have a security certificate, so it shows up as not secure. That can make a big difference in your ranking. So that's a quick thing to change. The second is I would add some more information to his homepage. He has this scrolling bar. Um, however, I personally don't like scrolling bars. They're a little bit hard to figure out. They get buggy. Sometimes they don't work. Um, so I would have his images and a little bit of information about him and where his business is located other than just saying in Chattanooga, Tennessee on his homepage. Because if you want your homepage to show up in Google search, having some information there can really help. Having some keywords throughout his website can also really help, and I'm not seeing a lot of that going on. So from an SEO perspective, this is not a super great site. From a user experience perspective, there are some really, really great things. Okay, let's hop into website number three, which is Summer Rain Photography. First, we're gonna go through the things I love about Summer Site, and then we'll talk about a few things I would tweak. So let's scroll down here, and as you can see, we've got a big image, and this is what I absolutely love. Right at the top of her website on the homepage, we have a write-up on who Summer is, what she's all about, what her story is, and she really starts to build connection with you if you are considering her for your photography. So this is what differentiates her from every other photographer out there in her area. It's her. It's her personality. It's what she loves. It's what she does. It's her passions. It's her unique personality. So if you are not highlighting this in your website, you are missing out on a huge opportunity to build connection. So this is a huge UX um, component of a great website, she's building connection. You want to have connection, you want to have trust, you want to have rapport. So brides are going through and they say either, oh, Summer sounds like a weird person or, wow, this is my girl. I love this girl. I want to be friends with her. And ideally, your ideal client wants to be friends with you. They're the kind of person who is like you because those people will be most drawn to your personality. And so that's a great thing. And right here at the top underneath, we have her publications being listed. So if you've been published, make sure you put those bad boys right front and center on your website. I personally would even include them on every page of your website. Because the thing is, not everybody lands on your homepage. They might land on a blog. They might land on an about page. So you want to make sure that they see this because that says, oh, wow, her work is good. It's being featured on blogs and magazines. Okay. All right, so we scroll down here, and I have actually need to refresh this because what you normally see when you load her homepage is we've got a boudoir, wedding, or engagement, So depending on, or portrait. So depending on what I actually select, it will bring me to a gallery for that particular thing. We'll talk about this in a second. I don't think that's really a good move for SEO. Um, but what I love after that is she has her testimonials right here on the homepage with some great images. Okay, I did not want to see that image, so <laughs> that is something that I would possibly change if I were her. But that's her personality, so maybe that's part of her whole thing. So then we scroll down, we've got investment right on the homepage. 
and a beautiful contact form, which is really unique. I like this. It's different. It's not the same as every other contact form. Okay. All right. So a couple of things that I would change about Summer's website. The first is you look up here and it says not secure. I would change that because that will help your rankings a lot by just getting an HTTPS certificate. The second thing is I would probably go to a plain text logo here that would also speed up the page load time a tiny little bit and it would match better with whatever photo is currently showing up in her gallery. So depending on what photo is showing up, these colors don't match. So I'd probably stick with just plain text. Next, I would look at this gallery and I would say, okay, what are my best two or three images max? That would minimize my page load time because page load time makes a big difference in SEO. So you want to keep your site beautiful, but you also want to keep it as fast to load as possible, both from a user experience, you don't want to wait on a website to load, and from an SEO perspective, because Google definitely affects rankings that way. I also think it's very hard to navigate around the slideshow, so that would be one other thing, either having arrows or maybe just one static image would be great. And one last thing I would make sure to change to her site is adding her address and location information where she's servicing, which cities are nearby in the very bottom of her website. That would definitely help with Google rankings. All right, let's check out website number four, which is Caitlin Blake Photography. So you're going to see a trend here. This one is also not secure. So if you want to be a photographer who stands out and gets extra points from Google, add security to your website and you will instantly be ahead of many other photographers. And as we scroll down here, this website definitely has a more light and airy vibe, but Caitlin is doing the exact same thing as Summer Rain. We have an about section right here at the very top with a beautiful picture of her as a smiling, happy, nice to be with kind of person. And that's great because if I'm considering Caitlin for my big day or for my family session, I want to know that she's going to be fun and nice to work with. So definitely have a photo that is not businessy or cheesy. You want to have something that's more candid, more lifestyle, that definitely helps. Now, as we scroll down, hey, I'm Caitlin, lover of all things food, lovey couples and thrifting. And we've got a more section and perfect up pop some other text. Now it looks like she's still in the process of designing her website. So eventually this will have more info on her, which is pretty cool. So scroll down here. How would I describe my style? She's got info on her. And again, we're doing the same thing as Summer Rain, which is really, really awesome. We're building that connection with our audience. Whoever's visiting this page knows who Caitlin is, what she's about, and starts to feel whether or not it's a great fit. And that's really what you want. Before people contact you, you want them to be able to determine for themselves whether or not they're going to be a good fit for you. Okay, so then we scroll down here. We have our different investment levels where we're starting. You don't have to have your prices on your website, but I don't think it's a bad thing either because, again, your clients will pre select themselves and say, okay, that's reasonable, that's in my budget, or they'll say, oh, that's out of my budget. So, whatever works for you. So, what would I change about Caitlin's website? Well, the first thing is I would change the security certificate. The second is I would add specific locations that she's serving in North Carolina. She has the rough location at the bottom of her banner. However, adding specific uh, cities such as Charlotte or Raleigh or different places that she services would definitely help her in ranking on Google. Um, it's a brand new site, so she doesn't have everything figured out at this point, but I think it's a beautiful, beautiful site and a great start. Let's hop over here to our next, which is Henry Chu or Chu. I'm not really sure how you say it, but he has beautiful, beautiful work. I love his logo. It's minimal. It's just one color, which is great because it matches any photos that hop up. And as we scroll down here, this one is a great website. It's very beautifully laid out. And you will see at the bottom here, what I love the most is he has all of his publications shown at the very bottom here. He also has some different information about what he does, wedding photography in Seattle, Washington, available for, for travel, and his contact information at the bottom here too. For a lot of people, they don't actually like filling out the contact form, or they just want to ask you a different question rather than a wedding booking, and you have a wedding booking form. It's just easier to have your email if possible, and even your phone number listed at the bottom of your website on every page. And then that way you have that information for them. You make it easy. It's a user experience win. So we can scroll down here. We can look at his about me page. I'm like a sushi chef. I like things raw, but hella flavorful. Wow. So what's really, really great about Henry's website is obviously he is just not afraid to show who he is and showcase his personality. A lot of websites, when you go to them, it's, you know, uh, Brittany Blake is a wedding photographer based in Seattle and she loves to be with her pet bunny and take photos and she's so passionate about photography and she hopes you will trust her with her day. Now that's great, but it doesn't really create a connection. You want to put yourself out there, have a unique personality so that people say, wow, I love this guy's work or wow, I love this girl's work. Or maybe they say, wow, this person is not for me. Either way, it's a win for you. You don't want to work with people who don't fit you, right? So that's really great. Henry does a great job with that. He's also got all of his featured 
um, posts down here, which is really, really fantastic, building social proof and a beautiful Instagram feed. And it doesn't hurt that his photography is absolutely gorgeous, of course. So we can scroll down here, see his approach. And you can check out more of his website later on. But you can see he's also got HTTPS up here, which is really going to help him with ranking compared to those who don't have it. And a lot of text. So text is good. A, it builds relationship because people can read more about your unique voice and what you're about. Um, but second, text is good because Google sees it. So from an SEO perspective, Google can't look at an image like this and say, okay, this is taken on a log at this park in Seattle. No, Google is going to look at the text underneath that says, okay, this image was taken at this wedding venue in this city at this time by Henry Chu, the wedding photographer based in Seattle. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's hop over to our next website. Uh, now that we've taken a look at what I love about Henry's website, honestly, what would I change? Probably not much. He has a beautiful, beautiful site design, and I think it is fantastic. It loads really quickly, which is great for rankings. It's got HTTPS. He's got his location information down here. If he wanted to, he can maybe say also servicing and have a few different suburbs within Seattle. I don't know if he's ranking for Seattle, but this is definitely a very competitive keyword. So if he is not ranking, he could look at different nearby cities such as Bellingham or something like that. Smaller subsets of Seattle will help him rank for those areas as well. Okay, let's hop over to website number, what are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six, which is nickandguyphoto.com. So... This is Nicholas, and he has a beautiful website. We'll just scroll down, let you have your own first impression. Okay, so what do I love about Nick's website? First, it's a beautiful design, and it is HTTPS, which definitely wins. He's got a great full-page photo on the front. I don't think that's necessary to a great design, but it definitely is a nice first impression. The thing that I don't really like about it is I can tell you just by looking at it that it is a WordPress template. It doesn't really have a unique feel. However, many brides might not know that. I might only know that because I have looked at a lot of these templates in the past. And using this plugin here, I can tell you it is the Osaka theme. Um, great theme, works really well. However, it does look like a theme if you have seen other websites like this. So that may or may not happen. I don't know. He's got his testimonials right here on the front, which is very beautiful. And then he has all of his keywords targeted right here in his um, frequent questions. So he's Austin, 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 Texas, Austin, Texas, photographers that travel, photographers in Austin, Texas. So he's definitely keyword stuffing a little bit here that may or may not work. And back in the day, the reason he's doing this is back in the day, Google would look and say, okay, how many times does the word Austin, Texas appear on this website? And if it appeared 100 times, they would say, okay, this one appears 100 times on this site, but only twice on this site. This site must definitely be 50 times better. That was back in the day when Google was really not as refined as it is, is today. So now they look at a lot of different factors and it doesn't necessarily work in your favor. Sometimes Google will say, this looks suspicious. He's mentioning Austin in ways that it just doesn't work. And so they might actually penalize him or they might not. So that may or may not work for him. But definitely having your keywords somewhere on your website makes a big difference. He's going to do better than if he never mentioned Austin, Texas. One area he could add is Austin, Texas is not even located in his footer and neither is his location, his email or his phone number. So I would definitely consider adding that if I were Nick. Scrolling over to his different pages, we've got a blog for different love stories, and this is a really, really cool feature. He's got a tips for your day. Okay, website load time is not so good here. There we go. Oh, perfect. And then let's look at tips for your day. So this is one really great thing you can add to your site is giving brides something other than just photos. So for instance, he has this article here on should you elope with a list of different things for elopement. So he might actually wind up um, ranking for this term, elopement in Austin, Texas. Whereas if he didn't have any information on this, then he probably wouldn't. So he might get brides just from that. It also helps um, build his rapport and authority with brides because they say, okay, he's an expert on this topic. He's helping me. I feel grateful for that. Thank you, Nick. So you are definitely in a better place by giving your clients extra service rather than none. Okay, so that's a nice feature on there that I really like. He's got a client area. Say hello. Let's take a look at his contact page. Now, one other thing that isn't so great, his site does not seem to be loading very well across his other pages. So I would take a look at how large his images are or maybe his code can be compressed a little bit. So he's got his information here. If you're looking to hire someone... Uh, we're probably not the best fit. So he's doing the same thing. He's got his personality and he's really playing on it, which is great. View his pricing. Let's get started. 
enter your information, great. Um, one other thing that I would note about all of these websites that I haven't talked about yet. You see how these tabs have labels at the top? Some say the person's name, some say just home, some say um, the website domain. Well, that's actually an opportunity. This is your site title. And in Google Chrome, it shows up in the top of the tab. Google SEO actually looks at that. And so when I hover, you see it's Henry Tew Photography, Seattle Wedding, and Adventure Elopement Photographer. Whereas here with Caitlin's website, it just says home. And when I hover over there, it just says home. So when Google looks at that, they're not able to determine what that website is actually about in the same way as if you had your information listed there. So make sure that your website title is listing your areas and the keywords that you want to rank for. So you can see some of these websites do it, some, some of them really haven't. All right, let's keep moving. So we had this guy, and you'll also notice there's this little, it's called a favicon, and that's the icon that pops up on your website. This is just the stock favicon. It's not Nix, so I would consider putting up a N here or something like that, so you add your own logo. But that's really a small detail that not too many people look for, and really, is that going to make a difference for bookings? I don't think so. All right, our next wedding photography website is lapellaphotography.com. It's HTTPS, which is great. We've got some beautiful images right here and a nice logo in the center. It's all one color. That's great. Everything looks great. As we go down here, we've got wedding, lifestyle, stories, which I guess are different blog posts, which is great. Um, it's a little bit much. I would consider from a user experience, I don't know where to click, so I might make these bigger. Um, that might help with your design layout. Scrolling down here, we have some more information on who are we. It looks like they offer services in two different languages, so they've just got that doubled up here. You've got two wedding photographers, and this is cool. Uh, one thing that I would consider, though, is maybe capitalizing on some fun facts, a little bit more personality, because there's a lot of text here, and it's a little bit less relational. It's more informational, and so we want to really create relationship with our customers that will help them. Um, decide if we're the right fit for them. So I would consider updating that a little bit. Contact information, we have a nice map here through Google, which is going to help them a little bit with their location ranking. And as we scroll down, we've got Instagram, and at the bottom, we've got Featured On Looks Like Film. So they've got Featured On. It would be nice if they had a few more features, but maybe they're just getting started, so that's great. Adding their location information would really help down here. And as we scroll down, we've got a one-page website, so everything is on the front here. Looks like... The one thing that I'm not a huge fan of, uh, scrolling down, is all of these banners. They take up a lot of room in your actual page load time. They're going to be large images that they're loading, and so it would actually be better just to have wedding portfolio with a small image, if you could, or maybe even divide this in half. So have weddings on this side, lifestyle on that side. That way you have half of the image space being taken up, so your load time is a little bit faster. And again, from user experience, maybe make that a little bit smaller. Let's go to our contact page. That's all there. And blog. Perfect. So it looks like things aren't quite optimized to load right here. And I can't select post. It looks like everything is in one just long continuous feed, which may or may not work for them. Um, but I do know that as I scroll up, I wish that I had access to the menu. It looks like I have to scroll to the very top to have access to the menu. So if I wanted to contact them or switch pages, I'd have to scroll a long way, especially if I was way down here. All right, let's move on. We've got the light and love. So this is a great great image that we've got on the front here. However, it's very hard to see this little enter site button as well as this logo. The logo doesn't do anything and the enter site is sometimes hidden depending on what image is showing up. Once we actually open it up, this is a really simple website design and I like that. Um, right at the very top here, about Brit. Well, hello babe. She's got a beautiful write-up of who she is, what she's about. And then we scroll over here to our portfolio and we've just got a simple image slider. I think if we click here, and this is why I don't like sliders. Sometimes they just don't work. Okay, so I have to click on the far right. And I'm assuming if I were on mobile, I would just touch it. So if you don't have a ton of weddings, you can just put together a portfolio slider like this. Um, this is a website that I actually selected because I like how simple it is. And if you're just getting started, this could be an easy one to create. She's also got her publications. Wow, that is, that is something else. I did not want to see that. So um, one thing that I would personally change is if I were a photographer, on this particular website, I would keep it to weddings or maternity or boudoir or whatever so that I don't actually have to see that if I'm not looking for it. That might throw me off. However, that's her personality, so maybe that's exactly what she wants. Only the people who like that kind of stuff are going to contact Brit. I think it's Brit. Is that her name? Maybe. Okay, wedding inquiries. We've got this beautiful contact form. Pretty simple, basic. Contact me. 
Interesting. So she has a separate one for wedding inquiries and contact. I don't really think that that's super necessary, but I guess it's because she's asking extra questions that she doesn't want to ask otherwise. So that's one way to do it. And investment, we've got some information here on where she starts. And I would personally add a button down here to contact so I don't have to scroll up. That's just a user experience kind of thing. And reviews. That's one thing that is missing on Brit's website is she doesn't have client reviews being featured prominently. So I would add that to the menu bar. I would probably also have those on the home page. You could have them on top of her beautiful images. So you can see again, we can't find this enter site button on a dark image. So that's great. That's her website. And not secure, I would change that for sure, as well as add her location information. So she does say here, born in Las Vegas. However, it's not really featured prominently on the bottom of her pages, so it's not going to help her for SEO as much. Great. We've got just two more websites to look at. This second last one is the Wayfarers Co. I think this is a beautifully designed website. It's really great. Nice branding here. I'll scroll down, let you have a look. So we've got some beautiful posts laid out. So they've got lots of posts, but because of the way they're laid out, they're definitely more appealing than if we have a ton just in a grid format. And again, a should we elope section. So if they're targeting elopements, having a should we elope definitely shows that they are exports, experts and provides people with some information and they can show off some of their elopements that they've actually captured. So let's go take a look at some other things. We've got journal, that's their blog. Got an about page. Meet your new adventure buddy. So right front and center, they're showing off exactly what they're about, what they're passionate about who they are. So that's really, really great. And we've got a nice say, hey, contact link right here. Some fun facts. That's a great thing that you can always add to your website. And at the bottom here, just links to more work, which is great. And again, I love that they are featuring where they have been featured right here, front and center on most of their pages. You can find it. Okay, what would I change about the Wayfarer's website? Honestly, I think this is an incredible website and I probably wouldn't change much. I think it was really, it fits their style, fits their approach and has personality as well as from an SEO perspective. Oh, here we go. We're not secure, so I would change that and I would add some location information. We've got beautiful Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I would probably add maybe a few subsets of that, so different areas around Asheville and then add but available for destinations around the world. So that's what I would do. And last but not least, we have ericabrook.com. And Erica's website is actually probably my favorite out of all of these. I'm not sure why. It might just be my personal taste. But when you first load it up, you have this beautiful image. And again, we don't have a scrolling slideshow. So it is a big image. It's taking up a lot of file size when you're loading your website. But because it's just one image, it's going to be faster. As we scroll down here, the first thing you see, my priority as a photographer, first and foremost, is to capture moments that truly matter. So you're starting to win me over from the very get-go at the very top here because you're telling me what you're about. So that's great. And we've got just a showcase of some beautiful images here, the best of her best. And I kind of like that I don't have to scroll to find big, nice images, but it's also not so many that I'm overwhelmed. So some websites, when you open them up, they've got 15,000 pages of images and I don't really have any other information. Her, she keeps it simple. She has probably 10 here. And then at the bottom, we've got some separate posts that she's promoting. Her Instagram, what would I change? Well, she's secure, which is great, but she doesn't have location information on here. As we scroll up and we go to meet Erica, I think this is a really fantastic page. Yo, it's me, Erica, just a nerdy girl with a camera. So this is really fantastic. Again, she's playing on her personality. She's not afraid of being who she is. And at the bottom here, it says, let's be friends. And that links to her contact page. So that's great. People don't necessarily want to book you for photos, services that there's no relationship there. They want to work with somebody who is essentially a friend, who makes them feel comfortable, who they want to be around. So that's really important. So she plays on that. Again, she has some more information on my approach. I'm sold, let's hang. So think of ways to actually not just contact me, but I'm sold, let's hang. How much better is that? And how much more personality does that have? Okay, moving on, we have her blog, which she's got some catered posts. She doesn't have 1,500 different posts. These are probably just her very best, the ones that she really wants people to see. So I would encourage you, definitely quality over quantity. If you have a ton of okay images and a handful of really amazing images, show off the amazing images, you'll do better every time. So she has just a few great posts and then we have book. Let's get this started. Make sure you meet the Meet Erica page to make sure that it fits. And again, what I love is she's winning me over here. 
If you're considering me to capture your story, I don't take it lightly. If you haven't, read the Meet Erica page where I talk about myself. So she's winning my trust by saying, you know what, I want to work with you if we're a good fit. So make sure that you actually read about me. And I'm just more uh, likely to trust her simply by the fact that she's looking out for me. She's not just trying to get my business and that's it. Then we have here, we've got what you're looking for, different types of photography, where's it happening, when, budget. And I like that she has a suggested number here. So this is probably where she starts normally, which is a great way of saying, okay, this is where I normally start without necessarily having to list all her prices and scare people away. So they can still enter in 1200 bucks if they want to. But that's just a suggestion. I think that's really great. Where'd you meet? I want the details. So that helps develop relationship. And we've got Instagram, how do you hear about me? And tell me a fun fact. So that's just one thing that makes it nice and quirky. And her Instagram is on point. So that's Erica's website. What would I do differently? Well, if she's trying to rank, which I don't really think she is because her Instagram has, you know, 14,000 followers. I'm pretty sure she's booked pretty solid. However, if she was trying to rank for a specific location, I would say she needs to add some information in the bottom of her pages. I also think she doesn't really capitalize on showing where she's been featured. So I don't have any publications listed here, no testimonials. So if I were a bride just trying to check out this work and see what other brides experience have been, there isn't a lot of information there. So adding those things in would probably do a big help to Erica, even though her website's already amazing. Just having a few testimonials scattered would really help making sure you had some location information and some publications would be great. So there you have it, 10 awesome photography websites that you can borrow from in your next website design. Whether it's the first website that you are working on or it is a redesign, hopefully this gives you some great ideas of what to do, what not to do, and how you can work on your website to rank in Google and also for better user experience. So I hope this video was helpful for you and you learned something. If you did, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment below. I want to hear about it. And listen, if you are looking for more in-depth coverage of photography SEO, what's involved and how to rank your website, make sure to check out our full-length SEO workshop. All right, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.